Carousels are a very common feature implemented on many websites. Swiper.js is one of my favorite and go-to carousel libraries. Not only is Swiper super simple to install and set up, it comes with an abundance of options for carousel settings, modules for items like pagination and navigation, and is easily customizable, making it a great choice for a simple carousel or even more complex ones like you can find within the demos. In this video, I'll show you how to get set up and create this really cool photo gallery cube carousel with Swiper using Vue 3. Now, although I'll be using Vue for this video, Swiper supports frameworks such as React, Savelle, Angular, and even just basic vanilla JavaScript. Now, if you do enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like on it as this really helps out the channel. Also, if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that for more content like this. Alright, let's jump into the video. Within VS Code, I have a new Vue 3 project set up. If you don't have one created, you can can easily do so at the command npm init view at latest. Within the integrated terminal in VS Code, we're going to install Swiper with the command npm i swiper. With Swiper installed, let's navigate to our home view file. Swiper for view exports two components, Swiper and Swiper slide. To use these, we're going to need to import them from Swiper slash view. We're also going to want to import the core styles from Swiper as well. For the images we're going to be using for the carousel, I'm going to create a new variable instead of equal to an array of strings containing the image names. Within the template, let's define a new carousel with the swiper component. Inside, we can define the swiper slide component. Let's create a v4 loop on the swiper slide component and output a slide for each image that we have. Inside the component, let's define an image tag pointing to the folder where the images are located and dynamically output each one using the prop of photo. Inside the browser, you'll now see we have the default carousel implemented. Currently, the images are overflowing. Let's fix that. If we inspect the carousel in the browser, you're able to see the carousel has a class of swiper, and each slide has a class of swiper slide. Back within VS Code, let's target the entire carousel and give it a width and height of 400 pixels. And we're also going to set an overflow property and set the value to visible. This will allow you to see the full cube effect that we're going to be implementing. For each slide image, let's add a width and height property of 100%. And now back inside of the browser, things are going to look much better. Swiper has many different parameters we can add to configure the carousel. You can find a list here in the documentation of everything you're able to add. For this carousel, we're going to be adding several different parameters to create the cube carousel. First, to create the cube carousel, we're going to need to import the effect cube module. This module also has some default styles we'll want to import as well. On the swiper component, we need to define a prop called modules and bind an array to it. Within this array, we want to add the module we imported, effect cube. Next, we need to add an effect prop with the value of cube. This is going to control the transition from one slide to another. Inside the browser, we'll now have the cube carousel set up. We'll be able to cycle through the images within a cube with this really cool effect. We can add some additional props to customize this carousel a bit further. Let's add a prop called grab cursor and set this to true, which will add a grab cursor while hovering over the image. To keep this carousel looping back to the first slide at the very end, we'll add a prop of loop and also set this value to true. We can also customize the cube effect itself with a prop cube effect and pass it an object. We're able to set a number of things such as the shadow beneath the cube, the offset, scale, and also displaying shadows when going to a new slide. These values I have for these properties are the default value for the cube effect you'll get if you don't pass anything, which to me looks great so we're going to be leaving them as is. But definitely feel free to mess around with these values. The last thing we're going to add is some pagination to inform what slide we're currently on. This is a module just like the effect cube. So we're going to need to import this module from Swiper and also import the default styles for the pagination. Then we'll need to add pagination to the modules prop and also define a pagination prop and set the value to true. And now within the browser, we have the completed cube carousel of pagination. Now, if you want to do some advanced customization for the pagination, it's super simple to do. You can pass in an object and instead of a boolean value to the pagination prop and control an abundance of properties, such as a class name, rendering custom pagination, or the type of pagination. Normally when I use swiper, I personally stick with the bullets and for basic styling of these, such as the size and color, we can just override the properties with CSS. 
If we inspect the application, we can see that all the bullets have a default class of swiper pagination bullet, and the active slide is going to have a class of swiper pagination bullet active. Let's target all the bullets with swiper pagination bullet and alter the width and height to be 12 pixels, and we're also going to change the background color to white and set an opacity to 1. For the active state, we're going to change the background color to aqua. And within the browser, as you can see, we have now customized the pagination with a few simple style overrides. Alright, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Let me know what your thoughts are on Swiper. I definitely think it's one of the better carousel libraries out there. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.